So what is Windows PowerShell? Well, I can tell you what it's not. It's not a replacement for VBScript or Kickstart or any of these other scripting languages that have existed in the past. Windows PowerShell is a command line interface, or a CLI, and you'll hear me use that term a lot. It's also a new way of developing Windows and other products so that they are more manageable. So PowerShell is not only a product that you download and install, it's really changing the way Microsoft creates the server products that we administer. It's an interactive shell as well as a simplified scripting language. So you can do stuff and get immediate results, and you can script those things for better automation. Now, why did Microsoft decide to go with a command line interface? Well, there's a lot of reasons. You might have heard that PowerShell is sort of based on some of the popular Unix shells, and that's true. And those Unix shells offer an awful lot of administrative automation, which is something Windows has been missing. But let's talk about why that happens with a CLI. A graphical user interface, or GUI, is great for doing something once. If you can imagine going into Active Directory users and computers and creating a user, it's not that hard. In fact, it, it's pretty easy. It's, it's fairly intuitive. You just click a few things, fill in a few text boxes, and you're done. The problem is that performing anything multiple times in the GUI gets really tedious, it's repetitive, and it's error prone. Right? Try to create 500 users in Active Directory users and computers, and you'll find that you miss the occasional checkbox, mistype the occasional name. So that's why GUIs really aren't suitable for automation. A CLI is inherently better for automation because you can script something once and then run it over and over and over. Now you may be saying, well yeah, but I, I can do all that stuff with a GUI. You sure can. You can certainly write very task-specific graphical user interfaces, tools that can be written to perform, perform specific repetitive tasks. However, do you want to spend all of your time hunting down these point solution, these single task tools, and learning how to use them, and maintaining them, and paying the licensing fees? Well, you might, but it'd be a lot easier if you had a command line interface that could just do it all. You learn it one way, you learn it one time. Here's what I like to call the dark ages of administration, the days before PowerShell. In other words, here's why Windows administration has been so tough to automate up to now. Microsoft starts by building the functionality of whatever product you're working with, Windows, Exchange, SQL, or, or even something little like the DNS or DHCP server components. After that, they build a graphical administrative tool, typically a snap-in for the Microsoft Management Console, or MMC. Usually, that MMC console embeds most of the operating logic for the administrative functionality. That is, the MMC itself knows how to connect to a configuration database, make changes. It knows what changes are allowed and which ones aren't, and so forth. Everything you can do with that product is typically exposed through the MMC, but it's tough to automate. See, there's no reliable way to automate the process of clicking buttons and filling in text boxes. Sometimes, if the product team has time, we'll get a WMI provider from them. This will often provide access to configuration information, but maybe not all of it. It's pretty rare, in fact, to get a WMI provider that covers everything the product can do. Sometimes the product team will turn out a few command line utilities, but I've never seen a command line utility that could completely replace the GUI. And sometimes we'll get a COM component that is accessible from languages like VBScript, and again, it's rare to find one that does everything the GUI could do. That's the problem. They build the GUI first, and then build everything else on the side, because there's no real way to leverage the functionality embedded inside the GUI. So, when we write scripts, we're left with limited functionality that's inconsistently implemented across products. It takes a lot of smarts to be effective, and you're left with a bunch of things you often just can't automate well. All right, here's the problem with the dark ages. Some command line tools do some things. Some com objects do some things. And some WMI providers do some things. We Windows administrators have been running around for most of our lives finding a tool that can do this, and, oh, this is completely different, but I need it to do this other task. And It's really difficult. You have a lot of different things to learn, and they all work differently. And the point is that not every tool can do everything we need. In the PowerShell age, that product functionality is still built first. However, the next step is not to build a GUI. Instead, all of the product's administrative capability is written in the .NET framework, or in WMI, 
and exposed through Windows PowerShell commands. Once those task-based commands are available, both GUI consoles and scripts can be built on top of those commands. This places the GUI and scripts on equal footing, so that anything can potentially be done in either environment, making every aspect of the product available to automation. So there's the advantage of Windows PowerShell. We bring all of our administrative functionality together in one place. You expose that functionality in such a way that it can be used by a graphical user interface or a script. See, that guarantees that all of the functionality exists in PowerShell, because if it doesn't, then the GUI can't do it either. So that sort of drives Microsoft when they're developing products to make sure that PowerShell encompasses everything. That way the GUI works. So it gives us one way to do things and they're done in a consistent fashion. So you learn one way to do things and that way will work across a number of different tasks. It's the idea of taking a single set of skills and reusing it over and over and over. Now, in order for this to be effective, Microsoft has to build new products so that the administrative functionality is built in PowerShell. They've already done that for a number of products, such as Exchange Server, members of the System Center family, and more. Microsoft is still producing GUI consoles, of course, but as Exchange Server 2007 demonstrates, those are all just big wizards that basically fire off PowerShell commands under the hood. That means all of the product is accessible from the command line, and that means you can automate anything. Of course, it'll be some time before every Microsoft product is fully redesigned to work this way, but it's definitely a path leading in the right direction, and it's one Microsoft is committed to. But in the meantime, PowerShell isn't waiting around for products to catch up. It lets you use effective management technologies that exist today, such as WMI, the .NET framework, even the component object model, and Active Directory services interface. While none of these provide complete coverage for administrative automation, they do provide some capability, and in most instances, PowerShell makes it easier to leverage these technologies than older solutions like VBScript, Kickstart, or JScript. So you can automate lots of stuff now using these technologies, and you can learn to do so more easily than in the past. Most of these existing technologies also work for remote administration. For example, you can run PowerShell on your workstation to remotely administer Active Directory by using technologies such as ADSI. You can also perform many remote management tasks from your computer using WMI. Neither of these technologies requires you to deploy PowerShell to remote computers. ADSI and WMI are part of Windows, so you just need PowerShell on your workstation. So what do you need to run Windows PowerShell? Well, you need Windows XP or later. That includes Windows Server 2008, and PowerShell is included with 2008. However, it's not installed by default. You do have to go into the features and turn it on. You're also going to need the Microsoft.NET Framework version 2 or later. And you only install Windows PowerShell on those machines where you're going to use Windows PowerShell, either interactively or to run scripts. Now, speaking of installing it, if you're downloading it, you just do so from Microsoft.com slash PowerShell and run the installer. This installs Windows PowerShell in a Windows PowerShell directory within your system root folder. It does install as a hotfix because this is a core part of the operating system. PowerShell works by allowing you to run commandlets, each of which are either task-based or designed to let you fine-tune your results and your output. These commandlets all connect to one another so that you can, for example, use one commandlet to get a list of running processes and send those processes directly to another commandlet, which sorts and filters them, and then on to another commandlet, which formats them into an HTML report. Commandlets don't just produce text, like a list of processes. They actually work directly with the functionality of the operating system itself. Commandlet names follow a consistent standard, and you can define nicknames, called aliases, to make typing easier and faster. PowerShell is extensible too, meaning you can snap in more commandlets to give PowerShell additional capabilities, such as managing Exchange, System Center products, VMware's ESX server, Citrix products, IBM WebSphere, and much more. Alrighty, you ready to go? Let's start by using Windows PowerShell interactively, which means you type a command, you hit enter, and you get immediate results.